climate change, political instability, volatility of the commodity market, rising inflation, rising cost of living, and here in Nigeria, the situation is compounded by the challenge of the depreciation of the Naira. By the governor of Lagos State, Nigeria's economic capital, Mr. Babajide Smolu, seems to be saying, all hope is not lost. So we are here this morning to interrogate him on what he sees differently from the rest of us. In fact, I have this quote from him, and I quote him. He says, in times like this, hope is the sure anchor for our souls. Without it, our ambition tomorrow vanishes. It will seem that Governor Sonwolu has transitioned from just being a governor to a merchant of hope. But on this show, we'll probe what product is offering, what is retailing for the benefit of citizens of Lagos State. I'm Ruben Abati from Arise News. And joining me this morning are my colleagues from other uh, media houses across the country and the state. First, let me introduce Shola Kusoko, who is the general manager of Lagos Television, an award-winning journalist. There's also here Babajide Otitoju. Babajide, Babajide Otitoju is an investigative uh, journalist, historian, and polemicist. He's a uh, controller current affairs at Television Continental, TVC. I also have with me on this panel Jeffrey Uzoma, who is from Channels Television, a celebrated presenter and program producer. Well, let me, before we start the conversation, also acknowledge the extreme presence in the studio with us of the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Kaduri Obafemi Amzad. We select members of the Lagos State Executive Council who are in studio guests this morning. And they are also ably joined by select members of the fourth estate of the realm, the business community, women, and youths. Well, Governor Sonwul, thank you very much for giving us this uh, opportunity to have a conversation with you. And I would like to start by asking you to do a self-assessment, honest self-assessment. Congratulations on your victory in the last general elections. But when you look back, your first time in office, what would you say were your high and low moments? Honest answer. High moments, low moments. Well, thank you very much, um, Ruben. Um, and thank you very much um, to all of my um, friends from the media, Jeffrey, Gide, my, name, my namesake, and Shola. And of course, to thank all Lagosians that have um, decided to tune in and to for us to have you know, a conversation this morning and for me to just give my views and thoughts and to explain to the citizens of Lagos and some of the things that we see, how we can indeed collaborate, work together and build you know, um, a city and a state that will outlive all of us in an enduring policy, um, an enduring legacy that we all truly will be proud of. Um, Ruben, I think you've, you've started, I mean, in a very hard one, um, you know, it's always very difficult to say you want to assess yourself when you're still on the seat. But like you said, I should be fair and be transparent with it. In the last um, four years and into seven, eight months into the new term. So what it means is that in my eight-year journey, today I would say I've spent about 60, 61% of my time, if you take a 100% you know, um, view of it, because we count our days, you know. So for the entire four years of 1,460 days, um, it was not all rosy. Um, it's not easy to oversee and to run um, the largest city state in our country, the biggest you know, um, black city in the world, um, the fifth, sixth largest economy, with all of its um, opportunities and challenges. Um, we came into office 2019, like, like, like you know, and within seven months you know, of, of that government, we were confronted with you know, a global health issue, uh, which was the COVID-19 um, pandemic. That in itself has a full turn, not only on us, but entire world. So Lagos was the epicenter of our country. We were carrying over 50% of the body, right? And um, we, we rolled on. You know, we were able to 
sort of like, I mean, hold on and give hope to our people. Um, and towards the end of that year, you know, um, also, you know, in defining my government, there was also a huge protest, you know, which was hence us, you know, um, a protest in which the youth of the country also came up. It never started in Lagos, but had, you know, all of, it, all of the things about Lagos in it, where they were, they, were, they were able to speak out and speak up, you know, on all the things that were happening around, you know, the police and um, police brutality at that time. That had, you know, its effects, you know, on my government. But beyond all of that, there were even some smaller issues, you know, that also draw my government, you know. There was a young man that died, you know, in school that was, you know, he went home, um, Sylvester. You know, that was also, as a parent, you know, challenged me, you know, drew out a lot of things, as simple, you know, as, as, as that event and that activity were. You know, Lagos had... All sort of, you know, there were times when people would tell me, some would know, water is taking over, you know, Lekki, um, and we're, we're in river, and, you know, and, and the rest of it. So we, we went through all of that, that we cannot, you know, leave, you know, our, our places. And the, the truth about the matter is, in each of those challenges, we were able to stand up, stand counted, and we were able to come out of it stronger, better. Learning the challenges with it, understanding what the problems were, but leaving Lagosians better off. You know, and so in all of those problems, we were able to build more schools than we've done 10 years prior. We were able to open more hospitals than we've done several years before. We were able to start and complete rail projects. We were able to build you know, more um, um, facilities that now sees a robust um, um, integrated transportation you know, um, solutions. We were able to hand over um, at that time, 14, 15 um, jetty terminals were able to also ensure that, you know, we take a, a decent amount of our people out of poverty. We're able to recreate, you know, how we should respect ourselves in, in public spaces. At one field sweep, we, we, we procured, we, we, we brought in over 64 new fire engine trucks. We're able to, you know, escalate, you know, what defined a mega city you know, like the size of Lagos. What makes a city of our size resilient, livable, you know, and compare to mega cities of, world, of the world like that? I know throughout those four years and more, even into seven, eight months now, we don't sleep. Ruben, we don't sleep. This morning alone, there's been a building collapse, and we have to respond. This morning, based on the rain, there were renovations that were going on, right? And, of course, Government officials, there was, a, there, was, there was an ongoing revolution construction collapse. Yesterday, Ruben, a woman delivered at the bus stop in Lagos. Our emergency has to respond to it. We're able to save the child. Unfortunately, yesterday again, right, there was a boat mishap. 17 passengers, 15 were rescued. Almost immediately, we lost two. The two probably I'm still investigating. Maybe their life jackets were not fully fastened on. Maybe their life jacket has been defaced, that they couldn't hold them. Something must have happened. Because one of the things that we said is that we will ensure that anybody that is on our waterways must obey the safety rules and must come out of it safe. We're not about excuses. We're about to solve problems. In 24 hours, I can tell you those are some of the things that I know that has happened in the city. Several you know, um, um, issues also. You know, that will be coming up. That has, that's how Lagos is. And we have to have the capacity to respond. One of the things that we've done is you need to do what we call build redundancy. You don't need to wait for an emergency to happen for you to be able to respond. You don't need 64 fire trucks of engine because all the 64 will not work, will, will work at the same time. But position them so that in the days in which they are needed, they can come out. Ruben, I'll also tell you, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there was a fire incident at the old Mandela's building. We have a fire engine that can climb up to 16 floors. We're able to bring the fire down, the ones on Broad Street. But guess what? Once they wanted to come to the back, because of the behaviors of our people again, they have blocked the road, they have built on the road that leads to the back of it, the engines couldn't get there. And that prolonged you know, um, 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 the ability of our first responders to bring down the fire, 
within you know um, the needed time. So it, it lingered on for for a lot of hours, and that led to you know um, a lot of further damage on the city. That is how I want to you know sum up how my my journey has been. It's been ups and down, but I leave it to Lagosians. I leave it to all of you sitting here to be able to write the story and write it well. But what we will do is that for every day we have, we're not shy at ensuring that we put in our very best. We will ensure that the, the best, you know, is for the best amongst us. Um, um, like we keep saying, you know, um, it's not about who we know. It's about our sincerity of ensuring that everybody that parts our way, right, get the best of our service. And we'll leave the rest to, to history to judge us and to, to be fair, you know, to us. But we're not, we're not, we're not stopping. We're so, believing that we still have an, another opportunity. I want to thank Legations for that. Things that we did not do well or that we did not do fast and quick enough, let us be able to finish it up within the next three years. And we're not going to give excuses. We're committed. We're, 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 we're self-motivated. And we'll do that for our citizens in Lagos. So, 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 okay, so perhaps, Mr. Governor, one of the things that I, I don't know whether you, you forgot to talk about it, but I would like you to speak to, which was one of the things we perceived to be another low point. Uh, it comes within the electoral cycle before we talk about current reality, and which is, has to do with the stoking of our fault lines along ethnicity and religion. And that was big in Lagos. I don't think Lagosians saw as much response to that uh, as a build-up to that election as they expected, given the fact that Lagos holds an excellence perception as a cosmopolitan city. We know there are indigents, of course, but it's been populated with a lot of people. So I would like you to speak to that particular uh, scenario. We had people who threatened people. We did not see as much of consequence for bad behavior as we should see. And maybe you would like to respond to that. Jeffrey, we did. We spoke up. We, we actually challenged people and were able to say to them that we cannot um, um, be defined by those moments. You know, in politics, everything comes in, right? Um, governance will stop at some point, and people will play politics. And politics is a very dynamic thing. You know, people will view things differently. You, there were a few things that were, that were going on. At the federal level, there was a complete change of government, right? And it was also at a time in which a lot more people, right, became, you know, um, rightly so, um, aware and wanted to have a say and have a view in government. Secondly, it was also the first time we were also testing, you know, um, the, the laws governing our electoral process. It was the first time in which you saw candidates being emerged even a year before the real elections, you know, were up. So there were a lot of trials and, you know, up and turns that were, that, that were on, you know, on, 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 the, on the game there. And there were lots of new players, you know, that needed to um, um, come on board. Social media was, was the very first time in which it was a major player, rightly or wrongly, you know, because you will know that as strong as social media were, you know, uh, has been everywhere in the world, it also has its own pitfall. So it was a combination of all of that, right? And so we needed to raise up and immediately, you know, rise to other claims that have done this for over 100, 200 years. You know, uh, uh, we're, talking of, we're talking of a democracy in this current way that is, that is under 25 years. So it will be challenged. It will have the forces. But one thing, you know, was for us, which you, you, you spoke about, as a governor, as the sitting governor there, I didn't control any of those things. I stood to say that this is a level of playing field. Let people be able to freely express themselves. Of course, there will be people on both sides that would um, be um, um, over, you know, um, zealous of it that will, you know, ordinarily, you know, go have a, out of board, you know, to do things wrongly, you know, and, and I think that the system, I, I mean, I was a player, so I certainly could not be, begin to punish people, you know, the system, the institutions must have enough, you know, um, shock absorbers to be able to deal with it, you know, um, independent umpires, um, um, the police, security, to be able to deal with it, because I certainly cannot continue to be a judge, you know, in my own case. But, you know, but that is what of things that happen. Yeah. Your Excellency, Nigerians are going through a lot at this time. And um, what we are hearing out there is that governors are not doing enough to ease the pain on Nigerians. They are saying states are earning far more than they used to earn 
from the distributable revenue from FAC, but that they are not doing enough. I want you to tell Lagosians, use this opportunity to tell Lagosians your strategy to ease the pains by way of palliatives and the rest. Your strategy and how far you have even gone at this time to help us solve the problem of food insecurity. How far have we gone with the Immortal Project, for example, which should help us produce a lot more um, tons of rice Thank you. than we have currently? I think first is really to um, express one's um, deepest empathy with our citizens, to say that uh, one is not aware, to say that um, you are not um, unmindful of what or where we are and um, would be completely insensitive. Mm. So I want to, you know, also look straight in the camera and say that indeed uh, we all have a responsibility to do a better job, you know, of ourselves. As leaders, you know, um, it's for us not to give excuses. It's for us to be able to solve, you know, our social economic problem as, as uh, you know, at, at this level. And be able, because what is the essence of governance? You know, provide security, make life better for its citizens, and give them, you know, a sense of belief and hope. And that's why one of the things that we hope that we will be able to communicate, you know, at this sitting this morning. So as a government, uh, we cannot be everything and everywhere, you know, but we can provide and create avenues for others also to join us. There are some things that are directly under our control, which I'll talk about. But there are some things that I also can encourage other players to see us, to understand, and to work with us so that the effect and the, 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 the output and outcome will be felt you know, across the board. The first thing that we have done, or we will be doing you know, from today going forward, um, is that we actually even want to start with our own public servants. And to say that given the challenge that we see now, can we even be creative and have a flexible working hour? And so immediately from next week, we're working out a plan where civil servants from level zero, from one to 14, will come to the office, we can do it. And Lagos State has you know, um, um, such resources. So the first thing is to look at ourselves and be the first change you know, that we want. So we will be reducing the, 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 the number of days that they, they'll come. You don't have to put pressure on the road. You don't have to be on the road for three hours trying to say you're trying to get home at night, so you can plan better. You also can reduce, you know, your economic pressure. We have in the fleet of the public service over 120, you know, buses, but it's not enough, right? So reduce it, you know, let's plan out our time. Services will not be disrupted. Services will not be reduced, you know, to our citizens. You want something for government, there will still be somebody that will do it for you. Two other arms of government that um, are already doing this. In the health sector, you know, they always have calendarization. They always have, you know, days off and rest off. So they will continue in that line. Our teaching, you know, um, sector will continue. Our students will continue to come for five days. We'll work out an additional transport support for our classroom teachers to ensure that, you know, they keep the five days because we know that these pupils have exam time and the rest of it. So we will continue, you know, to, 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 to keep that. So that will be the first baseline, you know, for us to be able to reduce the pressure and the tension that we have amongst ourselves. The next line is to also to look at our pensioners, right? How well are we fed, you know, to reduce the burden of pension liabilities? I dare say that Lagos State is the first, you know, to ensure that our pensioners, as we speak now, we're at the stage where it's only pensioners that have retired in 2023 that have not been given their full payment. Every other one has been cleared. And this year alone, in January, we clear some outstanding pensioners. February, we've cleared. We've done over four or five billion already this year. Next month, I've given a commitment that I'll do another four billion. What that will now do is that within a month, you know, of so of your retirement, you should be able to get your check. You know, no other part of, of we believe in the country has anything close to that. So we have brought succor to people that have worked, you know, for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years in the service of Lagos State to ensure that they will earn you know, their pensions, you know, as that went to you, and they can do whatever they want, you know, with their, with, their, with their resources. That's on our public sector side, and it's across the civil service, you know, the local government, 
you know, the health sector, the, 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 the teaching service is across board. I write and ensure that everybody, nobody is left behind. You know, now going to our public, sorry, to our citizens, we started something last year from um, August where we had a 50% reduction on all public transportation, right? Um, it, was, it was reduced, you know, and, and stopped towards the end of the year when, you know, things resumed back, you know. But now I think um, transport cost is also a major, major, major pain that our citizens are. So almost immediately from this weekend, we're throwing back a 25% reduction on all public transportation. Right? We're working with the various unions to ensure that we also can support them. But on our BRT, on our trains, on our ferry services, you are going to begin to enjoy that almost immediately from this weekend. I've given instructions, and so they are working on the logistics for that. On the food palliatives, which is one of the ways in which we also can intervene, right? As we speak, I'm expecting over 100 trailers of rice coming, you know, up north. And I will explain what is happening to our own, you know, meal in a short while. You know, food purchase and redistribution that will cover about 300,000 households, not just individual household, that will have 10 kg rice, 5 kg gari, 5 kg beans, you know, and have other small, small things like tomato and the rest of it in a combo bag, right? The procurement of that started, it will just be a logistics of how to package and distribution that would follow. And I will explain to you in the course of this conversation who are the people that will be supervising and superintending all of that to ensure that the real set of people that want these things to get to, you know, will get, will get there. That's one level, one layer of direct procurement of rice, stable rice, beans, gari, and some small, I mean, pepper and, to and tomato in one box. The next level will be utilizing our experience during COVID. We're going to be opening, you know, um, what we call Sunday markets in about 42 markets in Lagos. Sunday market. What you will see in, that, in, in those markets, you know, is the same sort of like, you know, st stable, you know, food item. But this time, you'll be buying, but you'll be buying at a reduced cost. We're going to cap what you can buy at not more than 25000 and I'll be giving you a 25% rebate immediately there. You know, so we have started that at our middle market in Ijuro, which you have all seen. But we're taking it to 42 identified markets in Lagos. We're not giving you the opportunity to come and want to buy what of 100,000. That means you are Ruben, you, are, you have the capacity. But somebody that wants to buy 10,000, 15,000, which are the people that want to take out of the poverty line, will give you... A, a discount, an immediate discount of about 25, you will get that rebate. And you are not just buying one item, you are buying, you know, a, a combination of, you know, staples, you know, and you will get a relief immediately. So that Sunday market will happen for the next five, four, five Sundays and will continue to review. So we will make all the logistics available, all the food items will be at this. We're working with the local government, with the leaders of the market. We've identified and we'll publish, you know, all these things. That's the second level. The third level will be that we are now going to do what we call, you know, the, the, the soup bowl, the, the, the soup kitchen. We did it also during COVID. We want to identify uh, mama put, mama, you know, um, 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 caterers that are in, in your do, and we want to be able to feed between 1,000 and 1,500 in every local government per day, you know, at the first instance for the next, you know, 30 to 60 days. So let's watch out the logistics, you know. We have identifying, you know, the, 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 the caterers already, you know, uh, funds will be sent to them and they will have vouchers to show that just people just walk in, you know, and just give them something, you know, to eat, you know, one a day and let's just continue, you know, on that. The, the, the whole idea around this is that one of the verticals will reach, will reach you in one form or the other. So that's regarding food. No, I've not finished. You know, on the health sector, right, we also realize that so some people's, their problem is not the gary or the right. There's just some problem. I mean, I told you a, a, a woman gave birth on the, on, the, on the road yesterday. Why should that, you know, be an, a case? Because it could be pressure, right? So immediately, where all our 31 general hospitals will be given free child delivery. Either during normal birth or cesarean birth, we will, we will, we will take up the, the cost so that we reduce the pressure. You know, on, on, on our people almost immediately. We are also working with them to reduce the cost of some particular types of drugs, hypertension, diabetics, 
and we can give a rebate at our hospitals. We can give a rebate. So we don't want that to be thrown out, you know. So we're, we're, we're planning to give, you know, to work out with the hospital and give, you know, a rebate on that. That's number two. Number three is that our six health districts, we have six, we are the only ones that have that in the country, by the way. We have six health districts which are headed by permanent secretaries. Over the next three months, they'll be doing what we call the health mission twice a week. On a health mission, you know, they'll put up the canopy, doctors will be there, nurses will be there. People will just come in, about 1,000 people, 2,000 people will come and get a health check. You know, maybe you're diabetic, you're hypertensive, they check your blood pressure, and they will give you medicines, you know, based on what it is that they, they realize, I mean, is, is wrong with them. And maybe some eye, you know, testing. I'll, I'll check if we have, you know, enough of that to go around. So all that will also go around concurrently, you know, um, in, in the health system. So you will see that in any form, if the food or the transport, if the um, um, hospital doesn't touch you, one thing will touch you. We looked at education as well. You know, out of school children, what are some of the challenges? They said they asked parents to show evidence of a tax payment of about 8,000. Let's remove that. Let's get people, I mean, let's get parents to bring their pupils back to school without necessarily needing that burden. That's on the education sector to enter, you know, and to ensure that they can, they can bring, you know, um, their kids, you know, um, back to school. So you can see that, you know, we're, we're cutting the interventions, you know, across various sectors. You know, we're crossing, we're, we're, we're cutting it in health, in education, in transportation, in agriculture, you know. So we believe that in one form or the other, you will, you will, you will have soccer. You will have something that you can take back and you see that this government is working with you. To answer the question around the rice mill, um, so the challenge that we have is that is the biggest mill in the country. We're, we're challenged by feedstock. It's paddy. We have two um, um, aggregators, you know, FX, you know, and um, Lagos Commodity Exchange that we've given commitment to look for paddy for us. You know, one of the things that has happened is that paddy is not easily um, um, growable in the southern part of the country. We have farmland in Ogun State. We have farmland in, o in Oshun State. We have the small ones in Lagos. But it, it cannot meet up with the size and the capacity of the mill. Right? And one of the things that we realized that, you know, even up north, there are a few issues around paddy. So for our mill, we are going to be having a conversation with the Minister for Transport and with the federal government. If they can permit us, you know, to do a one-off, a one-off, you know, importation of paddy, the mill that we have there can take two vessels. They have enough salary that will take two vessels of paddy. And that can take us for eight months to nine months production of close to 2 million bags of 50 kg. So if we have that, that, that exemption, you know, so that we can use that, you know, to encourage the, the rice farmers, you know, to steal. Because we, we, what we hear is the challenges of people not going back to the market, sorry, not going back to their farms on time, and so we cannot get, you know, enough. Money. In fact, to say to you, sir, you know, some of the parties that we're expecting from the north, we even have to write to some of my colleague governors for, us, for them to give us passage to be able to drive down this paddy. Because the conversation is like some are being smuggled out or some. I, we don't want to listen to that. But it's a long journey. 800 kilometers, 1,000 to drive down. And, and because we're waiting. You know, it's not a meal where you can kick, start, stop, kick, start, stop. If you, you're going you're to run in the ground. So we need to have, you know, the silos there are 16 massive silos of almost 32,000 metric tons. Two vessels of, of, of party can fill up that place. And we will be able, you know, to, you know, on, on a very large scale, be able to populate, you know, the citizens, you know, with, with stable, you know, food like rice. So we, we, we will be pursuing that opportunity, you know, with, with, with the federal government, right? And I'm also using it, I'm speaking publicly. If there's any party aggregator, any party rice that they know that they can send us down, we, we're willing to, to buy our funds are out there, you know, to buy, to buy this party. So in a medium to short term, these are some of our, our solutions at ensuring that we can, you know, in all of the verticals, we can touch, you know, our citizens in one form or the other. But the question is the how. For, to make it a lot more very transparent and be people driven, right, um, um, we, have, we have used a mechanism before, which is we had all the trade union you know, members, had the, the religious leaders, members, we have the CDC, CDA as members, 
of the monitoring and the distribution you know, um, channel. But immediately today, I'm also setting up another um, 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 economic advisory team. It, well, I don't want to use economic, but like an advisory team that is bipartisan. You know, I've identified you know, um, the secretary of PDP, for example. I've identified the former chairman of the Labour Party that is in the House of Rep, for example. I've identified um, Mr. Otumak, Otumak as, a, as an example of civil society. Um, the chairman of the, um, of the um, Guilds of Editors will join us. Um, the chairman of NLC will join us. Um, the local government chairman will join uh, the, the chair of the local government will join us. A representative from the House of Assembly will join us. One religious leader, a Christian, Muslim, and Deputy and I will form the team. An economist like Shino Fagbenro uh, Bayron, uh, um, you know, who is also you know, um, a, a public commentary, um, a lady who is, um, who is um, um, very sensitive to consumer price protection. Um, I hear Shola Kusoko. Let's, let's all, so that let's, let's, let's let all of these people advise us, rethink all of these things that I've said, you know, tell us that this will not be enduring, think through this, right, but also ensure that the distribution is completely not people that knows the governor or knows the deputy governor, so that we can, you know, be transparent, you know, with our intentions, you know, of helping Lagosians out. And it's also an opportunity for me to advise, you know, other sectors. Like I said, government is just one arm. You know, um, everybody knows that government is an enabler. We're not the real, you know, employer of. The... So MSMEs, you know, let's be creative. If you don't need to have all your tailors come the same day, be very creative. Give them a flexible work hours. The private sector comes, right? It's a time where we need to as stakeholders in this country, we need to reduce the effect of profitability and keep life alive. Yeah. Right? It's not all about shareholder value again and ensuring that it is profit, profit, profit for our stakeholders. No. How about the citizens that have been very committed, you know, um, um, purchasers of your, of your goods or consumers of your product? At what point in time can we all, you know, just slow down and ensure that we can give back. We did it during COVID. You know, as, as a city, as, as, as a state, we all came out to support ourselves. This is also a clear call. You know, and what is happening is not peculiar, you know, to Nigeria alone. It's everywhere, and every country has to, you know, think through, come inside, and think of a local solution. And that's why I'm using this opportunity to call all my friends in the private sector. Let's think of how to support them. This morning, I called one of them again. I said... I need about 100,000 boxes, spaghetti, indomie, andres, just give me a combo, 100,000, not for sale. And these are some of the things that we're going to be, you know. So the logistics of that, we'll see it in the next couple of days. So do something like that. Look at how you need to help people to keep that your factory safe, to keep that your office safe, because it's only when the city, you know, is peacefully safe that, you know, we can all begin to talk about profitability, and showing that we have, you know, shelter value and the rest of it. You know, what we're going through, it is a time for all of us to see who can play what, you know, and let's, you know, be, be able to, to hold each other and know that there are no times, there are no difficult times that stays forever. Even spiritually, there are times of famine, yes. right? I mean, so it is that time in which we need to just pull back, you know, weather the storm and, and, um, and then believe that, I mean, um, things will, will turn around. No... No situation stays forever, but it's the ability to weather the storm during those difficult times that truly, really defines, you know, mankind and humanity. Okay, Mr. Governor, um, during your first term in office, you launched the five-year agricultural plan um, to end in 2025. Um, can you do an appraisal of that plan? And um, did that plan actually prepare you for the situation of things right now? Thank you very much, Ella. So there's something that we've done that um, um, we're indeed um, grateful that we're able to take this, the, 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 those opportunities. And you're right with our plan. In that plan, one of the things that we said, I wanted to provide food security for Lagosians. We realized that we're a commercial city. We're not in an agrarian city. We don't have the land. We don't have the, right? So we're building, currently as we speak, the largest logistics hub in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa the largest logistics hub in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa. 
and we've gone about 65% of the construction. Outside of this meeting, I will show you pictures of where this construction is. All the, all the verticals are out already. You know, all the massive, massive warehouses, you know, that we're building there, they have all been roofed. What are we planning to do? We're planning to build a storage facility, cold, dry facility that can help push, when we're having a push produce and product to our citizens, using that up as a receiver, you know, of, of large produce. So we're going to be having even trading, you know, facilities there. This is the hope that we'll be doing things like the aggregator, ensure that all of the young people that are coming from Benue, you know, all of the tomato that are, they can have half take from there. They can know that once they're coming, there's somebody that will write the check. And there is a, that facility will be able to, the ones that will not go to the market because of perishability, you know, and, 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 and storing, will have the opportunity to stay in that facility. And we're happy that we took that decision two years ago. The facility will be ready, should be completed before the end of this year. And it's something that we're truly grateful for that we took that decision. Out of that facility is to now down -tail, dovetail into what we call the middle market. The middle market, one of it is what you saw or you are seeing at the Duro, which is where you can see you know, exchange of, 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 of purchases. As we speak, we're building four concurrent. We're building as we speak, which will also be ready before the end of the year. On that four, we're identifying seven other locations that we also can build. It's still part of the plan. So we're building in Aja, we're building in Abu Egba, we're building in um, Agege, and I think um, maybe another one in Kurudu. So four concurrently to be able to, you know, um, 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 recreate what, we've, what we're seeing, you know, in, in, um, in um, Iduro, you know, and identify locations for additional seven. The last vertical on that is now we now be, begin to build corner stores, you know, at various locations. Those are smaller, smaller ones, so that we can see the entire value chain, you know, of food produce being available. you see fresh tomatoes, you see, you know, fresh, you know, pepper being you know, distributable in, in, an, in a very clean, hygienic environment, you know, for our citizens. That's one. Secondly, right, on the, on the, on the meat value chain, um, I think the total countrywide consumption is about, is under 4 million heads of cattle, you know, per year, about 3.7 point. Lagos in itself consumes about half of that. We consume about 1.8 to 2 million heads of cattle annually. So we need to be able to do G to G, with some of our, you know, northern states, you know, and if, if time permits, even, you know, other um, um, countries up north and see how these things can be fattened, can be grown, and ensure that there are offtakes in Lagos. In the logistics stuff that I'm talking about, those are some of the things that you see in the cold storage, right? And so we're also doing small um, 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 heads, you know, so that we can, we can hold them here, you know, and sort of like also fasting them for another two, three months. We have all of that in Ibudu, you know, and we're, we're putting up small, small ranches that once they come in, you have an overflow of 20,000, 30,000, we can retain them there. So the plan is for us to be able to fairly determine and see that we can plan for food security of Lagosians, right? On the final part of that master plan, it's also to encourage our citizens. There's what we call, you know, urban farming, right? Uh, uh, Ruben, at the small courtyard in your house, put tomato, put um, uh, pepper. Just, it doesn't take a lot. At the end of this session, I will take you around this state house. You know, we have fish, 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 um, 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 uh, fish pond here. Yeah. We, we, we rail chicken, chicken that produces egg, yeah. We attempted scenery, scenery to grow snails. That didn't survive. She, I mean, first it couldn't survive it because of the ants that came down to, we have small, small ones that grow fertile. It doesn't meet the entire need, but it's an attempt to say that, you know, even in your urban space, you can do a little, 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 little thing. So it's really around, you know, an end-to-end -end thought, you know, at ensuring that let us eat what we grow, let us grow what we eat, eat. and just take up this challenge. It's, it's, it's a clearing call for all of us. Take up this challenge yeah. and let all of our, you know, spaces that we have in our houses do something. It doesn't take, 
you know, a whole lot. And it just reduces the pressure, you know, of you needing to run to a market or you needing, you know, to, to look outside, you know, and, and see solutions. So shall I, that, that's, that's our plan. And we believe we're on the track, you know, by end of next year, we'll review it. You know, all of these markets that I talked about will have been, you know, up and running already. And we'll see what are the additional things that we need to add in or take away from it. Uh, listen the, to the various interventions across various areas that you have uh, talked about. But there is a certain contradiction that I think maybe you will help explain to our people, which is about your, pro, your government's program with regard to urban regeneration or urban renewal. Some people say, you know, in terms of their reaction, that those programs that they have seen look like an assault, one, against the poor. All this clearing of uh, under bridges, all this uh, closure of uh, business places, at a time when inflation is over 30%. And then the demolition of houses and some structures that some people say will seem to be targeted against non-indigents. <coughs> so these two issues. Because well, some will say, yes, these interventions, yeah. but... You know. Th thank you. Thank you very much, Ruben. Um, just to also reemphasize, the building that collapsed this morning, mm -hmm. right, I'm sure it's not an indigent issue. A real building actually collapsed. Thankfully, there are no fatalities. But if people were there, that's the end of it. No stories. A building actually collapsed this morning. So we're not, we're not being emotional. We're being factual. A fire incident actually occurred three weeks ago it's an 18 story building that changed the livelihood of a lot of people because of the carelessness of some people. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. It has to do with we ensuring that one, we can kill, we can put off the fire in respect of who or where you come from, have the capacity to respond to that call when it happens, but more importantly, creates a space where it doesn't repeat itself again. So after it happened in Lagos Island, and my last part people went to now clear the entire store on that right of way to ensure that any tall building in the event, because that's why I talk, you don't, you don't know when these things are going to happen. So you don't wait and phone and say, when this happened? No. Clearing those roads now, we don't, we're not asking who owns this shop? Where are you from? Which village did you amount from? You have contravened our planning rule. You have obstructed, you know, government from doing their work. So we have to reverse back to the original plan that we gave you to build. That has no measure of sympathy or emotion at all. It is part of what is done globally to rate livability standards of cities. Reliability, sustainability of cities. By the way, Ruben, you know, they made us a team position globally early this year by time out that Lagos is one of the preferred cities to stay in the world. That just didn't happen by we sitting back and not doing the right thing. The right thing to be done, right, are difficult things sometimes. They are the things that will appear as if it's not very popular, but it's to keep, you know, the city safe for all of us. The greatest good is for the greatest number. It is not about the face of who the person is, but it's about ensuring that we live. Because rule of law is one thing that we cannot, you know, compromise anyhow. When people, you know, I mentioned it when you said to me that I should, I should rate my four years. I told you that people were working on, on river. They say, come and see some oh, no, this is river lake, oh, where we're only on boat, oh, this is, those are the things that happen. People deliberately built on the right of way for drainage canal. Lagos is below the sea level. So those, those waters have to go, they are like flash, they have to go, come back from, and go back again. That was all we did. Let me tell you, there are some officers of government, officers of this government, that their houses went down. Their, their houses, they wrote that there's nothing, it has to go. We are not taking your house. If it's only one room that we need to take, we're not out to take the entire four bedroom. If it's only one room that contravenes, we'll leave the remaining three rooms. You can reconstruct and come back to your three rooms. But the ones that is on our line, we will take it and we don't have it. You know, because we just need to be able to rescue the city. If not, not only will we be doing this country a disservice, this is the melting point of our country. It controls 65% of international traffic. International traffic. So we need to continue to ensure that we have that, not just in name, 
in our response, in our ability to, 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 to keep the city. You know, we went around clearing, saw what we took away from Ijora or Balende and the rest of it. We've done a massive rail infrastructure. Underneath that rail, you see people on government spaces, and these are the kind of things that we see with traffic robbery. Some of them, you know, come up and come and rob people on, on the co-bridge. Ruben, last year, under the bridge of Apongbo, there was a fire incident. It shut down that bridge for nine months. We cannot, no government will fold their arms and let that kind of a thing happen. For nine months, killed economic activity and all the rest of it. So for us to go back and clear it is for us to do it over and over and again and for people to know that under the bridges, and these are mass, we cannot even have money to, to build those infrastructures again. We don't. So we have to protect what we have to ensure that these buildings can, can, can last 100 years, 120 years. So we will not, in fact, we've just started. You know, but what I can assure you is that nobody will unwillingly be attacked by virtue of race, gender, color, ethnicity, that I can put on the table and say that, please, if you know of any, I will be the first that first will apologize in the event of such thing happen, but we will make amends, you know, immediately. We will never allow things like that to determine who we are and how we govern the space. But it is really for all of us to understand that we're all cohabiting here and we need to jointly respect, you know, the rules, you know, of our cohabitation. That's all we're about, and that's what we're trying to do. So, so Mr. Governor, this, this measure that sounds reactive, uh, maybe be speaking to systemic failure, and I mean, uh, these buildings are already up. It's either somebody in the system is complicit of not doing their job, or there's clear inefficiency. So I would like you to speak to that particular one, so that it's not a question of the building going up and it comes down. It shouldn't come up in the first place. Then the second part is the issue of arbitrary increase in rent in Lagos State. I also like you to speak to that because sometimes it goes off the roof. Uh, it looks like we're building an elitist society. Well, thank, thank you very much. And I will be the first to agree, even publicly, that you are right without observation. Some could be just complete, you know, um, 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 fault on our part that we did not, you know, do the needful on time to ensure that those buildings do not even come up, you know, in and, and the first instance. So we take responsibility, you know, but the fact that we're inefficient doesn't also make it right. So we'll come back and correct what it, you know what has happened? There was a time in which the Lekki Corridor, right, was the fastest real estate development in the whole world. Then it came down to be in Africa. It was growing at the rate in which we have to start raising to catch up with it. And it is the measure of what people perceive as prosperity. Is a measure of what people think as the future of what they want. And you cannot stop, you know, human migration. There's no border post in Ojota to stop anybody from coming in, you know. So, so we as a city needed to respond to that by increasing the number of town planners that we have to employ, increasing the number of estate values that we have to employ, ensuring that we train them well enough to be able to... Let me tell you, in Lagos, we have 52 building control agencies. Each local governor, there's nobody that can have anything like that. 52. 52 town planning offices. Sorry, 57. In each of the local government. 57 town planning, building control, everything has to be. It's not centrally controlled. They have to all be dimensioned right down there. So what you see is fine. There could be, you know, failure of government. And I'm taking responsibility in terms of being efficiently, you know, um, and pro proactive, you know, to be able to deal with some of those new stances. And that's why I also, also explained in some other way where I said we have to build redundancy. You know, in emergencies, for example, we have to build, re recruit fire, fire servicemen, buy fire trucks, and just keep and fuel them and wait for something to happen. That's redundancy. But on this other side, we have to also scale up our, our you know, our staff, you know, and our engagement to be able to meet with those realities. And the point around, um, you know, fees and rates in Lagos and, and charges, you know, um, as against rent. You know, so we have a law that we've set up to protect the citizens, which says that, you know, um, 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 car, I mean, house owners and landlords should not ask for more than a year's rent. 
should not ask for more than a year's rent. Do people now obey and you know, do that 100%? My answer will be no. But what are we doing? There are numbers that we've set up. We have an agency that we've set up. It's called La Serrera. Lagos State Real Estate Agent. We set up that agency about two, three years ago to respond to something like this. That if you know people that are asking for you to come and pay three years, report them to us. We will take it up for you and we'll see how we, 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 we reduce that button for you. The other part of it are, are against the increment. You know, um, you know, we also cannot to play in a demand and supply you know, and force. The, the only other thing we can do is how well can we also provide you know, um, intervention houses in, and rest. And we're doing our best. This government has, has commissioned about 19 housing projects, 19 in different parts of, of, of the state. You know, and and, it's very, and I can, I mean, there's so many of them that, that we've done. So we will continue to do that. You know, but we cannot catch up with, with, with what they're doing in the private sector. You know, two days ago, and just a, a small digression, somebody was asking me that, why, Governor, why do people collect you know, rent in foreign currency. And I said, maybe it's a conversation that I need to have here, and we need to stop this. Why? Given the pressure of the currency that we're talking about, why, and, and there's a CBN rule that says that you cannot charge fees, you know, on rent in foreign currency. Why should we have, you know, landlords asking their, their tenants to pay in foreign currency for a house that is built in Lagos, that you are using Lagos road, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are breathing Lagos air for them to pay in foreign currency. I think it's absurd. And those are some of the challenges that we need to eradicate, remove, so that somebody that needs to go and pay 20000 it doesn't begin to run elter skelter just to pay, you know, whatever is your rate, pay it in Naira. And I think those are some of the things that we need to stop. Stop this dollarization of every single thing that we have in our economy. It has to stop. And it's only when we do this that we can reduce all of these things around dollars. Everything's about dollars. Why? Egypt just made a pronouncement two, two, two weeks ago and said, no, we're not going to be having a mix of exchange in dollars. We will use our local currency. We need to also be able to... I still spoke to YC yesterday. I mean, Mr. Kadus, is my... Is my mom? I'm saying we need to be able to think out of the box. My question is, all these Chinese companies, all these Indian companies, what stops us from exchanging their transactions with them in their country? In Yuan, if you go to Dubai, no matter what, who you are, you cannot pay a foreign currency in any of the services. It has to be in dirhams. Why can't we do the same? The Indians, why can't we pay them rupees? So I'm, I'm not, I, I, I might not have all the, all the, all the answers, yeah. but it's really for, you know, um, I mean, I mean our, our, our monetary policy to look and let's see. We cannot continue to do the same thing. And so let us even start with that. You're an Indian company, you're a Chinese company, these things, it, it's a produce from, from India, we're expecting. It's an item from, from China. Let's pay your currency. So it reduces the pressure that everything and anything has to be in one currency. People are paying school fees in, 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 in Britain. In, it's dumb. So maybe when all of this changes in our head, then we, 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 can, we can change, you know, we can, we can change you know, our perception and we can reduce these things. And, and, and all of this nonsense can, can stop. And I, and I think it's important for us to make the point that we sometimes are our greatest enemy. Government, yes, I, I'm not going to absorb myself, I mean, and, at, at the leadership level, of some of, some, some, of, some of the things that I've not worked with. And government needs to also be able to transparently communicate. Let's say it and let people understand what the challenges we have, what the issues are, so that not empathy, but they can you know, say to you, ask for the job, go do it. But at least communicate. Uh, let, me, let me take you back to a little bit of Jeff's question. Do you honestly think that the Lagos tenancy law can be faithfully enforced? Do you think it's practical?
practical for us to insist and ensure that no landlord contravenes the law. For us to insist that the landlord cannot take more than one year's rent. Do you honestly th think th thank that's you. one then um, as an addendum? You have the Lagos homes. What we hear is not me saying it, sir. What we hear is that the, the acquisition module is no longer transparent. And I want to ask you, would you consider going back to what it used to be, like raffle draw and the rest of this? Yes. Well, thank you. Um, um, Chide, I think the first question, um, the way that um, our federating structure is set, it will be difficult to 100% comply. And what, what do I mean? Um, so we set up a law. Uh, the beauty of any law is to ensure that there are consequences and you can enforce that law fully. There are consequences and you can enforce it. So if you don't have institutions or verticals or ability to enforce those laws fully, then you begin to see people not obeying the law fully. And that's why the conversation will tilt around a request for state police, for example. Right. If that, which I hear that um, we're, we're considering very seriously, if that comes to bear, and I have a city like this, and I know that for me to be able to have a city that I'll be proud of, I need to have 50,000 policemen in different forms being able to go and ensure that our laws are fully implemented in whatever form, right? Then it becomes a priority for me to deliver on, on, on that basis, right? But when, once I don't have the instrument or the ability to enforce some of these things, then it becomes, you know, a lot, a lot of challenge, you know. For, so, so the answer to it is that that's why all of the, the, the things around ensuring that we have, you know, um, the ability as sub-nationals to be able to take this thing to a logical conclusion in terms of policing, in terms of enforcement, it will stay. Because the moment somebody knows that, that they can't even come, until, you know, they will not even show up, then, you know, they, 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 there's always a likelihood that they will, they will get up. But once you make a few people escapes and examples and rest, then people, everybody will sit up and sit right. You know, and, 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 and ensure that the right thing is done. So the answer is we could get there. You know, we could get there if all of these things you know, change in the, in the course of, of, of time. Because I know that you know, one of the greatest things that help development you know, in nation is rule of law. I'm not a lawyer, but I know too well that once people can respect and obey and understand that there are consequences for action, then people will think twice. Why do you think that, I mean, in, in big nations and um, first countries that we all, you know, I mean, talk about and, and, and look forward to? It's because, I mean, it's almost, you know, certain that if you, if you flaunt a, a law or something, there's a high consequence that you, 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 get, you get picked up and, and, and you, will, you will come after it. Then you, you, you will correct yourself, you know. So on the second part around, you know, the, the, the Lagos, owned, I have also heard, you know, and I think it's a shame because I was in a government when we set up, you know, all of these ideas and I will, I mean, and I will take it up, you know, I will not come here and say that, you know, it's all 100% and that, no, it's, 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 it has not been, you know, a big challenge, you know, and these are some of the problems, you know, of, of our system that to ensure that once policies are working and are working, you don't need to change it. You don't have to begin to want to think out with it. You know, I know that the issue, we usually do like a transparent, you know, I mean, um, um, you meet some criteria, then there's a transparent, you know, um, um, lottery process that throws you up. So the, 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 the general manager maybe needs another job, you know, because it's also, it's also a call, you know, to reflect, you know, but, but, but we'll take it up. And thank you for those observations. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Governor, permit me because... Um, Jidei took you through that route, so I would like to just find out what your, um, what your take on state policy. Well, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm an advocate for it. I believe we needed it like yesterday. 
Um, and, and so the interesting thing there is we have what we call the neighborhood watch. Ruben was with, well, we're together at the Security Trust Fund, you know, um, um, board, um, and, and we both served, you know, um, um, diligently, and I imagine <laughs> honorably on that board. Uh, Dr. But thank you very much for your service at that time. But, you know, that neighborhood watch is still functional, and we're happy, about 6,000 of them. The good news is that I've given approval for us to recruit additional 4,000, 4 to 5,000 actually. I've given them approval to in, 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 I mean, in employ, and this is job for our youth, this is job for our able-bodied men, and, and so out of that number, we'll give some to CBD, we'll give some to CHI, but a, a significant chunk of it will be in our neighborhood. And what that means for me is that um, if they give approval for state police today, I have 10,000 men that I can further train and get them ready. You know, to, and these are people that know the entire community. They are, the, they are people that knows, you know, every nook and cranny. In fact, at some of our state security meetings, you know, they give us intel. They give us all of the black spots, all of the things that are happening. They, 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 they provide those, those intelligence for us. But it's just that they don't have, you know, the, the constitutional means to, to act. But they can give us, you know, what is happening in all communities and, and regular police nothing. So you can imagine if that is now turned around to be a proper law enforcement, you know, with all of the apparatus of, of, of state organ, they will hit the ground running. And we can, on our own, have a plan to double that number, you know, and, and, and to take it to a number that will make policing effective and efficient for a big city, you know, of our size. So, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling for it and I'm waiting for it. Well, Governor, at some point in the course of this conversation, We'll take uh, one or two questions from okay. some of our colleagues who are in the studio with us who may have one or two things to, to ask. But before then, I'd like to ask you this. You talked about infrastructure, and I want to focus on transportation, mm. which is the number one on the uh, item on the team's yes. agenda. Now, we've heard about the blue line. We've heard about the red line. So a lot of activity with regard to to rail lines, you know, developing better transportation. And then recently you talked about the Fort Mainland Bridge, uh, which, you know, some people are not sure you, may be, you will be able to complete in, within the remaining period uh, in this uh, second term. But a major concern is the condition of the inner routes in Lagos State. When you go to places like Ujudu, Aburu, even in Ogba, you know, Abule Ogba, you live in Isheri? <laughs> okay. <laughs> or Isheri, as he has mentioned. You know, those inner routes are not in good shape. Okay, in Ogba. Yes. So why are the inner routes neglected? Well, thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Um, and first, to go to the transportation infrastructure um, that you talked about, um, I'm, I'm happy we've been able to advance, you know, a lot more um, resource in that area, and um, if I might use this opportunity to say again, um, this government is um, excited that um, we will be um, commissioning, you know, um, the red line rail infrastructure. Um, in fact, exactly a week today, on the 29th of February, by um, Mr. President himself, he has graciously agreed to to honour us with his presence, and um, the reasons are not too far fetched. You know, Lamata, which is the arm of the Lagos State that started it about 20 years ago, um, coincidentally and fortuitously, Mr. President was the governor in the state that set up Lamata. So, in a way, this is his baby that has um, lived to, 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 to um, um, an age that he also needs to be proud of. So, so the red line will be um, the rail corridor that we, this government, um, developed all of the stations by ourselves, you know, within this this four year, four and a half years that we're, and we're, we're, it's a little celebration, but we'll, 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 we'll click glasses for that, to, mm -hmm. to turn my chest for that. So it moves all the way from Agbado in Ogun State, you know, um, through Iju, through Agege, through Ikeja, through Oshodi, through Moshin, um, Yaba, and all the way to Ebutemeta, you know. And you've seen that in that infrastructure, there are several overpasses that were also built. We've built six um, bridges concurrently, 
you know, in Lagos while we're developing this infrastructure. The phase two of the red line, because what you see in rail infrastructure is it must connect themselves. So the phase two of the red line will take off from Iputemeta and will do a, an elevation and go and meet the blue line at the National Theater. So we've done the rec we've done the design for it. It was meant to come to Marina before, but, we, but the cost and the level of and the level of um, 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 demolition that would happen would be too much. So creatively, we now took it to um, 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 National Art Center, where you can now hop on and hop off. You can actually transit, you know, come down from the red line, join the blue line, and you can go either towards, you know, Mile 2 or come to Marina, you know, and vice versa. You also, if you're from Marina, you can get to Epitemeta, come down, join the red line, and you're on your way to Agege and the rest of it. So that connects you know, a complete loop, you know, of a real infrastructure. Real everywhere in the world does not just start and end on its own. It must connect with some other real, you know, um, um, activity. So that we're, we're excited and we'll do it. But after the commissioning, you know, we still have to ensure that we clear all the right of way. We, we work with NLC because some NLC also use the tracks for the Lagos Ibadan, you know, um, movement. And we synergize on all of our, um, on what we call you know, um, the, 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 the real infrastructure movement. Um, there's a terminology that I've forgotten now. So, so that, that will happen, and it will, we believe it will immediately solve you know, a lot of uh, traffic and transportation challenges because it carries more passengers even than the blue. And the train, when you see it, is longer, you know, than, 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 than the blue line. They've got about eight to nine, you know, cars, you know, all put together, you know, and I must also... You know, I'm just supporting to also thank Mr. President. They're also supporting us on procurement of additional rolling stock for the blue line and for the red line. So Lagos should expect a lot more investment in the rail, you know, on these two lines, whilst we're developing additional, you know, um, investment on the other four lines. We're not stopping at that. So, you know, we've, we've demonstrated our capacity and our willingness, you know, so, so we're, we're, we're looking at other people to also help us with other development. But to the second question, you know, around um, um, inner roads, you know, um, it, it's, it's something that we are taking up frontally. It, it, the challenge is that, you know, Lagos requires, you know, year on year, you know, um, 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 budgetary provision of, in, in narrow times, you know, about, you know, um, um, almost five trillion people to do to this year on year on road infrastructure alone. If that is even more than the entire budget. For us to be able to, and Lagos in the last 10 years, we've, we've actually we've, 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 we've built and, and laid over 10,000 kilometers of road. You know, so those are big numbers, but because it's a city, not, not, just, not just a town, not just, you know, it's a city state. So every part of Lagos needs that road. If you go to other states, so when you do in one state, you at least you drive 40 meters, you, could, you do, but here, Everything, all the 50 are all interconnected and everyone needs to be developed. We're breezing up with it. We're working with the local government. In fact, right now, they've completed the plan to do 114 routes, you know, concurrently, you know, all the local government. And on that, we are also supporting with another 50 to 60. So in all, we should have about 180, you know, roads working concurrently. That also would bring a bit of discomfort, you know, because once we're also doing on these roads, you see that there will be closure, there will be, you know, um, 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 movement that will be impaired. So we need to plan all of these things in a way and you know, manner that the country does not also reduce, you know, the, the economic, you know, viability of us. So it's hydra-headed. We are aware of it. We see these things, you know, um, we know that there are things that has to happen. You know, and also because, you know, to also explain, you know, the water table that we have, you know, in our state, is, is also very funny. You know, it's we're not the state that is blessed with hard land. So very quickly, you know, um, our roads also can fail, you know, because of the water table that we have. So that's why we need to spend a lot more, you know, preserving those roads. You know, the new ones that we're doing, are, they are heavy concrete roads. On the Lagos, you know, a pair, a pair. So there are four, five, you know, big concrete there. So that they can, we don't need to come back for another 50 years, you know. But some of these ones, because of the size of bitumen that you put there, you know, by the time it mixes with water and rest of it, water and bitumen does not even, they are not friends. It disturbs and thing. And also, you know, let's put, you know, the, the, the environmental issues to it, drainages and the rest of it, you know. 
our behavior sometimes. We just, you know, um, 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 disband styrofoam. You know, some people are even still attacking us when you can see that it blocks a lot of the drainages. So once the drainages are blocked, water flows on the, on, on, on the, on the road that has been done. With bitumen, it starts in the cracks. It starts in the cracks. In no time, portals begin to, to appear. So it's, so it's, it's a complete circle of way of life, discipline of our people, government action or inaction quickly, you know, and, and all of us just taking ownership you know, and being ensured that, you know, once these things are done, these are public assets that we need to protect. These are public assets that we need to know that they've used public goods to do this. And we all just must, you know, earn up and, and, and show, you know, um, ability to, 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 to protect them. This point, uh, let's go to our uh, in-studio guests. Uh, if we can have one or two persons, but when those persons join us, uh, we would expect that uh, there will be no commentaries. The questions will be short, okay. straight to the point. But before then, you know, uh, Geoffrey. Okay, I, I just wanted to build on some of the things that you said. Uh, it, does it? It feels like the diagnostics is 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 understood by the government. But what happens to people, because I think I was driving through Korodu Road, and um, it, it was quite embarrassing. Your, your car is flooded all the time. So the people that are constantly uh, buffeted by these incidents every other year, is there something government is doing to actively help at least some level of succor uh, for places where they feel in their own perspective that something has to be done? I'm not talking about necessarily all the coastal area that, that had that pro proximity to the water body. I mean, upland uh, in Lagos, because it, it's a lot. You talked about Lekki and... To be truthful with you, uh, there will be rain every year. The amount of rain that will come, given all of the climate issues that we know, that we see, will be a lot. So the question is, how proactive are we? Um, there is no amount of, of proactiveness that can stop the rain from coming. And I've explained to you that also in our demography, sorry, and in the construct of how Lagos is, right? One, we're below the sea level. Two, and this is nature, that we cannot do anything. So, so those fundamentals are still there that we really cannot do so much about. But I will take it on as additional responsibility of government to ensure that we continue to communicate, you know, and engage ourselves. You know. So there is no, there is no part of Lagos that, that is left there's no part of it. It's only thing that can happen is that those drainages, we have 17 um, system one um, 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 drainage channels, 17. Some of them are as long as 27 kilometers, 32 kilometers, 14 kilometers, that must transverse you know, different parts of the city. And every year we have to, we have to, we have to deceive them. We have to you know, cut out stuff in it. You know. So it, it's a continuous exercise. But as, like I said, we'll continue to build more. Because the city also grows more. Ikrodu that you mentioned, Ikrodu is developing at a rate that it's like, what's going on? Right? And so we have to keep going back there. It's one of the places that I'm interested to see that how can we help in that development. The fourth mainland bridge that, um, mm -hmm. that um, Dr. Abad asked, so that I don't, I don't, I mean, pretend <laughs> as if I did not hear. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's eventually coming behind Ikurudu. Mm. So, so this is the plan. And I'll be very, very, very honest and transparent with what we have. So we started a process to say that we wanted to do a PPP model, you know, meaning that we we'll use private funding, we we'll use government funding, and we we'll be able to do it. Because, see, this is the first time a sub-national will be taking over, you know, um, construction of that size or of that magnitude just because we want to, you know, um, um, change the face, you know, of public transportation in our city. You know, the Co Bridge is central government, Qatar Bridge is central government, Third Mainland Bridge. You know, Third Mainland Bridge did phase one, did phase two. They, they, they had to come down again to do mm -hmm. phase two, federal government. <laughs> but, but we said that it's the audacity of belief that wants to do the Fourth Mainland Bridge. So we started a long process. That process has taken over three years. There's an extensive study, biometric, bio, um, data metric, and all of the big, big grammars, right? And we have preferred bidders that wanted to work. But what we've seen in the last two years, the dynamics of funding has changed globally, right? The kind of things they're asking of us are things that we know we cannot give of them. One, they're asking us to go and get a sovereign guarantee, meaning that we need to go and sit with the federal government, 
meaning that federal government needs to go to the National Assembly. Need. So technically what it means is that federal government will be guaranteeing that and they will not do it. We, we know that because it's not in their beat. It's not, so there's no point deceiving ourselves that that is going to happen. Because by the time they will say, where is the budget for it? It's not in our budget. Why would they? Because once they do it for you, why can't other 35 also states turn up and say, that, come and give us? It doesn't work like that. And so we were quick to realize that with our fund and say, you know what? It's not going to work. By the way, we also don't even want this dollar funding. We want it local. Whatever it is, it's a local transaction. It's a local bridge, right? And we have to fund it locally. So on our own, what we've done is we're working with them and we're working back. You know, so we've done extensive redesigning, creative redesigning. You know, so there's some places where you probably want to do eight lanes, let's do four. There's some places where you want to do three levels of bridges, let's do one. You know, but it doesn't take away the fact that first Penlabi we will do. I gave a commitment early this year, right, and I said we're going to ground break, you know, by end of April. I'm still committing to that that we will ground break before end of April 2024. Our plan is to face the development, right, into three phases. It's a total of about 37 kilometers. At the end of the day, it will pass close to your, to your station in Channel, and it will bust out on Lagos Ibadan Express. So that is the entire, it's like an M25, right? But we're going to take, you know, it in doses and take water. But the bridge component, by the grace of God, we will do it. The water component, right, I mean, the water component that will crosses, you know, the lagoon onto Ikorodu, we are going to do it. And so that's your fourth million bridge, you know, um, okay. alignment for you. All right, Mr. Governor, so that we get the input of the three audience. So I'll read all the questions so you can respond to them at once. <laughs> and just three questions, by okay. the way. Uh, if you forget any, I'll remind okay. you. Uh, this is uh, no name on this one, but it says, the last administration promised to give student loans. What are you going to, what are you doing about that? Uh, the second, this is from Tami Tokpe from Latif Jakonde Leadership Academy says, what is Lagos doing to improve access to electricity? And then this is from Dr. Kabel Labi Gerber, uh, that's the Nigerian Guild of Editors, says, how is your administration doing to, what's your administration doing to improve accountability at the local government level? So those are the three questions. Thank you. Well, this is a very, <laughs> but I mean, um, so, so around student loan, um, I, I think what we promise is student bursary, right? And we're doing it. We're doing it even outside of the states. Um, uh, Godfrey, I'm sure you know that this government, right, have moved from one university, state, one state university, to three state universities in the span of three years. You know, so we have three state universities now, meaning that we even are investing more in tertiary education than we've ever done, right? I mean, and, 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 um, and uh, well, we're happy because we've seen the future, you know, in that space. So what we've done is every of us student in all of these tertiary universities that are, of course, is indigenship, gets, you know, a bursary award, you know, and that we have not failed. In fact, part of the palliative that I also did also not mention is that we actually want to bring the bursary payment for this year, we want to bring it forward, you know, want to bring it, you know, closer now so that they also have something, you know, to, 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 to I mean, to work with, you know, as students in our tertiary institution. So it, it's not a loan, it's a it's, it's a bursary that we're, we're given, and we're still continuing you know, to give the bursary. And, and I think on education, I, I, I can just mention that we're not just stopping at these three. You know, part of the challenge that we saw in our health sector is the lack of um, number of you know, um, 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 prof uh, professional qualified you know, um, health practitioners right, in Lagos. Um, of course, we still recruit the largest number of doctors, nurses, compared to any part of the country. But we're working with the, with, 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 the, with, with the council, with the medical council, to see an NUC, to see if they can give us an approval for a medical university of, of uh, for, a, for a university of medical sciences, a university of medical sciences. You know, and it's part of our vision. You know, let's leave this place better than we've met it. You know, we all talk about nurses, you know, moving on. Can't we scale up the number of nurses you know, that we, we, we train. Can we scale up the number of doctors, you know, that we train? And the only way to do that is we believe we can also open, you know, a medical, a, you know, medical science, sciences university, you know, that we believe um, will also help, you know, to meet, you know, and to fill the gap, you know, in that, in that sector. So, so that, that's, by the way, 
Um, I, I think the, the second question was around from electricity. Electricity from Latif Jakonde, you know, leadership academy. For the for just for the for my audience, you know, there yeah, yes. <laughs> Latif Jakonde Leadership Academy is another, you know, intervention of this government to be able to train um, a group of fellows, you know, over a one year, you know, training. Um, I mean, um, um, that like, has been done in different parts of the world on leadership. These are young Nigerians that, um, this is the first set, you know, after uh, the demise of, 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 of our first civilian government, governor in Lagos State. So there's a class size of about um, 35 of them or so, all of them under 35, or, you know, all of them have been picked from different parts of the country, and they are go going through a one-year fellowship, you know, in Lagos State to be able to help them develop you know, um, not only political, economy, and leadership will also even include, you know, um, study tours abroad just to see how it's done. And so they are currently working in different agencies and government, of, of government offices right now, and some also will work outside. So his question is out. What are we doing with electricity? With the um, um, unbonding of the Electricity Act, you know, Lagos sits in a unique position. We have the two distribution companies you know, that are not entangled with any other state, a Keja Disco and a Code Disco. We're working with them. You know, we realize that we need to collaborate to them, with them, for us to have a lasting solution. So we have designed a Lagos State Electricity Bill that has gone to the House of Assembly now. And that bill fashions out how we want to unbundle and untangle the relationship that currently exists with a Keja Disco and a Code so that other players can come into it, we can make the, 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 the atmosphere, you know, um, investment friendly, you know, and everybody can have a play in it. You know, as compared to other states that some of the discos are tangled together in three, four states. Ours is, is unique. So the two of them understand that Lagos State have a big play to it. You know, people want electricity like yesterday, and they've agreed with us. So we want to play in with um, um, the relevant you know, regulatory you know, laws, we'll be setting up our own equivalent of NEC you know, and, and the rest of it, and so they know that that's where we're going. So is that law that we're waiting for the House to pass? Um, they, they're happy with us. They, have, they will have input into the law, and once it comes out, part of the things that you see is you see new investments coming, you know, I mean, on both generation you know, and, and distribution. They still have you know, um, capacity to also grow you know, on their own. So willing buyer, willing seller concept will work, will play better. You know, there will be a lot more investment around gas, you know, and other alternative, you know, sources of energy. You know, we in Lagos State have six IPPs that we also have that we're running on our own. So we are even a strong enabler on independent power, you know. So we know what all of the terrains are. But because the environment was not, you know, that um, new entrant friendly, which has now been, been removed, we need to localize, you know, um, the, the, the laws, the regulation, so that those investments, you know, can come. So, um, to my, to my, to my, um, um, to my um, dear um, Latif Jacquande uh, <laughs> fellow, um, you know, um, 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 the, the solution to electricity in, in Lagos, we, we are fully aware of it. We are working with the discos, and we are on the track to ensure that, I mean, it will be. And we are doing a lot also on renewables. You know, so a lot of our, a lot of our um, street lights now, and we're turning them to LEDs so that we can off, you know, them from, from the grid, and we can reduce the consumption of diesel and the rest of it, you know, from, from, our, from our play. The last question is around, you know, governance and, um, and the local government level. At the local accountability. government accountability at the local government level. You know, it's interesting because um, we get that. There is devolution of power everywhere, right? And we appreciate that um, the local government administration is also an integral part of our political structure. And we respect them, you know, at, at that level. I, for example, now, we don't even interfere in any form with their finances. And, and it's been said, you know, they've also confirmed that in our four and a half, five years, we do not take a pin from them. However, there's a need for us, and they've appreciated you know, for us to work together. The autonomy is not in doubt, right? But like you've observed, right, um, how those funds are also utilized, 
right? We all need to have a plane. There are some approvals that they bring to me, which I look through and I approve. The Auditor General of local government also gets, I mean, I also approve the appointment on that. The local government service commission and rest of it, I also approve of that. So there's some bit of monitoring and, 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 um, and, and um, engagement that we do, you know, but we can do a lot better. We can do a lot better, but we respect them being an independent, elected, you know, um, arm of government, right? We only can engage them and let them see that these are the needs of the people. Let them be able to, you know, um, 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 show, you know, a lot more um, 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 efficiency in the utilization of funds. And I believe Lagos are doing it. I believe the local government in Lagos are actually, I mean, uh, they are actually, you know, putting their weights, you know, together, and, and we're working together. One of the ways in which, like I said, they're doing, they're training 114 roads, you know, and those are my instructions, and immediately they, they key in. You know, we want to jointly buy more vehicles for security trust fund. You know, they, they've keyed into it. I've bought about 150. They are bringing about 114. They key into it. So we do things together in that space, you know, and, and it works well. You know, in our, in our I mean, um, in, in um, parking authority, we're, we're, we're collaborating. In um, advertising, we're collaborating. In waste management, we're collaborating. And, and that's how it's supposed to be, you know, and, and we continue to encourage them. You know, to work with us because we have the interest of the populace. You know, um, as, as a driver for it, um, at the end of the day. Uh, Mr. Governor, the questions are coming and they wave. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there are three questions that I'm going to serve you at this time. Um, one question is: How far have you gone with the 2021 MOU signed between your government and the state government? on seamless joint development. That question was by Olaleri, Nigeria Express newspaper. There is another question from um, Mustafa, Kamal Mustafa from Jordan FM. And he's asking, why is there no street light anymore in Lagos? That's, that's a tad uh, exaggerated. But he's saying, when we use start something like light up Lagos project, so the third one uh, came from our people in um, Woronsoki, and it says, about seven years ago, the Lagos government embarked on an ambitious plan to transform the Woronsoki waterfront into one of the biggest water transportation terminals, tourism and entertainment hubs in Nigeria. The project has since been abandoned. And the abandoned project has had a tremendous negative impact on the well-being and properties of people living in the Okoko area of Bariga LCDA. The sandfield waterfront is higher than the existing layout of the area, thereby causing excessive flooding of residential areas whenever it rains. And the mentioned areas greatly affected as Ola Bode, Aluko Street, Francis Olatunji Street, Gerard Ayame Street and Adib Bari Street, all in the overall shock area. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for, for those questions. I mean, I think um, this is really what I want to get to achieve, you know, an opportunity for our citizens to freely be able to, I mean, express themselves, engage us, you know, know what we're doing, and we, you know, in a similar mind, also tell them what our challenges are, where we are, and how can we jointly you know, um, solve our common um, challenges and issues in Lagos. Um, the first question, um, I imagine, was around um, MOU. MOU with Ogun State. Um, so, so in terms of physical implementation, um, you might not see it, but operationally, it's working. Um, and what do I mean? We have that um, um, unru un unwritten engagement between ourselves. Uh, we've seen collaboration between ourselves and Ogun State in terms of emergency response. We've seen engagement within ourselves in terms of, I mean, traffic management, you know, fiscal planning approvals, you know, land acquisition. All, a lot of the time, we, we move in and out of our both jurisdiction, especially Lagos, moving into open state jurisdiction to be able to um, get permission, solve some problems, you know, and pull back. You know, and a few times, too, they've called on us, you know, and we've responded, 
you know, almost, you know, immediately. Um, but, um, but, but outside of that, um, um, His Excellency, um, um, my brother, Dapo and I, also, you know, engaged ourselves further on the Otter, I mean, um, um, Lagos Otter um, um, Corridor, for example, we're jointly looking at it, you know, to see how we can, you know, finish up, you know, um, 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 that development is a federal government role, but we're jointly looking at it. Last week, I just got a letter from him. I told you about the red line, that the red line got into Agbado. Agbado is Ogun State. He just sent me another letter to say that how can we further strengthen it and push it to, um, um, he mentioned the Papa land. Some, yeah, he mentioned the name of the place, but our commissioners of transport have started engagement, you know, in, in that, in that, in that, in that land. I also mentioned, you know, the rice field. We have 500 hectares of land in Ogun State, you know, to cultivate it. So it might not appear as if, you know, you are seeing anything, but right underneath, you know, we understand, we appreciate that we have to collaborate. I have no other neighbor outside of Atlantic Ocean. It's only Ogun State. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to continue to go back to them to ensure. In fact, the three of us, we also said, Ogun, or you and ourselves, how do we ensure that we have full power on Lagos Ibano Express Road? Full all lit up. We're looking at the proposal to be to, you know, do that and ensure that the whole place, you know, is all is, is lit up and, and, and people can move, you know, 24-7 without, you know, without any. So, so all of that is happening. And it might not appear as if we're going, coming out to cut the tape, but we're working. You know, I mean, we have letters that were, I mean, I'm doing water, water, water project in Adinyo too. I needed to get like a eight kilometer right of way into Ogun State. We got it, we paid compensation, we almost finished that, the laying of those pipes. You know, so so it, 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 we don't have a choice. We have assets that are inside Ogun State that we we'll continue to keep, and we, 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 see, we see that synergy working. And but you but have, maybe. There are projects that you can jointly fund because some of, a lot of your staff are, are resident in Ogun. And I write them a check every month. <laughs> <laughs> On, on a layer. Well, I mean, we, 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 we are, we're talking. You know, we're, we're actually talking. And like I said, the real project are some of the ones that we can, we can jointly do. The Lagos, Ijebode, you know, um, Epe Road as well is another one. We did our road up to, um, up to the border of Ogun State. And, and because it was a beautiful, I mean, to our carriage, the governor also took up the challenge and was able to also further extend it. You put a toll plaza, we said we're going to both share the revenue of the toll plaza. You know, and, and so, so those are some of the things that we continue to, to engage ourselves in. There are farmlands that we have inside of their, of their state that we're you know, jointly developing. And it takes me to the question around you know, um, light up. You know, I just talked about we also lighting up you know, the full express. You know, it might appear as if it's not. What you see is that some of the lightning that we do, right, they usually have a lifespan. Some of, those, some of those bulbs, you know, need to be changed after some time. But more importantly, which is very, very important, I would say, there is always a lot of, um, of, of, of um, um, pilfering, or what's the word now? Van, sabotage. Van, you know, Van, sabotage, Van. yeah, and, and on, our, on, our, on our cables. Mm. You know, you will see that we have, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean cables that have been laid for, 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 for street lights. People go and cut those, wow. those cables. We've cut, we've, two days ago, we caught somebody removing you know, iron on our rail. Two days ago. So we've caught several people. So sometimes what we do is that those cables, we, we don't let them go beyond a certain We we'll just be joining them so that it doesn't become you know, um, interesting for them. So sometimes these are some of the things that you see. And we'll keep going back to join. We'll keep going back to, to, to fix. There are people that, that, that are, that are that are just vandalizing, you know, some of our, 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 our street lights. They will rip off the, 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 the wire, even inside, you know, the, 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 the poles themselves. You know, but, but we will continue to ensure that we, we, we go back and fix it. We'll continue to ensure that. And that's why I mentioned that we're actually even changing them from cable to, to LEDs and to, to um, um, solar, solar. solar lights so that you cannot go there. And change. So, but it's a lot of money. And it's something that we have to do, you know, with, 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 with um, intermittently. Um, the third question um, around Oworo Shoki, um, it, it's a very valid question. I mean, everybody sees, you know, that there's, there's a huge, you know, um, um, sand feeling there. Uh, we have not, you know, finalized what we want to do there. Um, 
the, the objectives at that time, right, in my view and in, in, in the reason of we, we, we looking at it, um, um, had not worked out very, very well. You know, um, the logistics of even getting to the place, you know, right from Third Milan Beach and the rest of it, was, was a bit, you know, was a bit, was, was a bit untidy. Yeah. So, so we, we needed to think it through very well. You know, and other options around, you put a small housing estate there, do you use that to trigger, you know, an investment, you know, for the transportation, you know, hub there, and, and the rest of it are conversations that, that we're, we're trying to think to. And it also affects, you know, the jetty that we have on the other side, you know, around Bariga. But I will ask, you know, um, the Minister of Environment to, to go and look at the, the streets that have been mentioned, yes. you know, on the Bariga side and see how we can, you know, do proper, you know, uh, either um, embankment or do proper, you know, um, 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 uh, we can receive the thing or, or just do um, shoreline protection, you know, for them so that they, they don't need to um, go through some of these challenges. But we see, we know there are a few proposals we have on the table. But we're looking for the best, you know, one that will meet, you know, the needs of what we see there, you know. And, and there have been one or two issues with even the locals that will resolve, you know, that is not needed, you know, at, at this forum. Okay. Um, Mr. Governor, I, your um, infrastructural drive is obvious in all of the sector, on the roads, uh, transportation, housing, health. But one, one major issue that has always been a problem has been the lack of maintenance culture, maintenance particularly. Um, you have put in a lot of work, investment, even from London, from Morocco to China, and these infrastructures are there to make life better for people. Now, do you have plans and policies that are good, going to be put in place to ensure that these infrastructures, you know, um, uh, are there for a long time and are maintained and, you know, go through the test of time? Thank you. I mean, um, it might appear as if um, we're not up to speed in terms of maintenance, you know, but, but that's not really what happens. Uh, sometimes it is the... It is the bureaucracy of government that also can slow down, you know, um, ability to respond fast enough because even, you know, ability to, to get money out and be able to, you know, um, get the needed um, um, maintaining agency to it. But we have the structures. We have La Siama, which is, you know, a Lagos, you know, infrastructure um, agent, is an old agency. We have a public works, which is a whole, you know, agency of government. Those are some of the things they've been saddled with. We have EFAN, which is a whole agency of government on the drainage side. So all of those institutions are there, right? All of those institutions are there. The only thing that could, that could also appear as if they're done is their plan, you know, on what, how often they need to do those maintenance, you know, um, I mean, um, um, those maintenance um, um, routine, right? And, and part of the things that we've said to them is that we'll continue to, you know, you know ensure that they can front load and plan ahead. They cannot be reacting. They have to be proactive. It's not only when, you know, the glass has got all dirty before you go. You know, so they must have regular, you know, scheduled and unscheduled maintenance. You know, it's not, you know, only when things are there. But the agencies are there. The parameters are there. Part of the things that we've said to them is that in the same way that we're paying for, you know, road and rest of it, the same way we're building the cost for maintenance. And it's also embedded in some way, you know, in, in, in the new you know, infrastructure that we're building. When we do a new hospital, for example, now, you know, um, cost of, you know, ensuring that a facility manager is there uh, is always embedded there so that the first few years, you know, somebody is on top of it before it passes on, you know, um, to those agents. I will ensure that the period of, 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 of um, um, retainership, the period of, 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 of guaranteeing to ensure that um, everything is done is not, is not left. So we, we're, we're doing the best. You know, one of the things that we'll probably take away from here is that we'll probably just need to continue to train and retrain so that people can, you know, live up to those expectations. And these are the feedbacks that we hear from negotiants that in terms of maintenance, be more proactive, you know, be more, you know, um, out there doing this. But we, what we have, what we have the structure and have, we have what it takes to do it. Governor, well, Lagos is doing very well with uh, capital importation, over 65 percent, I think. But there is, uh, it looks like there is one sector that the Lagos State government doesn't seem to be enthusiastic about, 
and that's the tourism sector. I mean, this is a state that has great potential for tourism. What do you think? Why is that so? And what are you doing specifically for the creative economy also? So, so Dr. Abati, for the first time, I will disagree with you on that because I will give you information that will confirm that. Um, for example, this last December, it's been, it's been said in various quarters that it's been the most, you know, um, um, tourists, or it's been most, the word to use, um, fun field, you know, um, December that we've had, this entire, you know, festive period, in which we have more diaspora returnees, in which we have more guests and, and, and visitors entering Lagos, you know, that they've seen in a very, very, very long and um, these are empirical statistics that we got, even from all of the, you know, um, um, tourist destination, the hoteliers, and the rest of it. And I think it was also one of the things that led to even the timeout, you know, scaling us and telling us that we are doing well, and 2024, we should actually even do better. And, you know, if you remember, um, Dr. Ba, we actually, last year, you know, did the groundbreaking, you know, for a film city, you know, um, in, in, in Ekwe, for... Tourism, it has to be consistent, you know, investment that you will see year on year before it begins to, to, to envelope up, you know. Um, we believe that the potentials are not just there. Lagos is deliberately, you know, trying to let people be aware. I'll, I'll give you examples, you know. In November coming this year, you know, there are about three different things that you see, you know. Um, the, 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 the art of X exhibition, you know, the fashion exhibition, a food exhibition. These are all interventions that we support year on year. You know, the, the J. Randall Museum, we know, we'll, we'll, there are several people that have gone there, but we're going to open it up generally to the public very, very soon. It's also meant to, you know, scale up, you know, our tourism potentials. Um, yes, the opportunities are there. More investment could actually come in. I, I mean, I take that, you know, but as a government, we're not unmindful of it, and we're not losing out on that vertical. We're actually creating, you know, an enabling environment where it strives. We are supporting the creative industry, training them. You know, Dell York, you know, um, 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 Ebony Life, um, 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 o Ogidi Studios. Last year and the year before, we trained over 10,000 that we paid all of their, um, 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 what's it called, their, their cost of training them. Each one of them cost us over a million, and each, each of the trainers. Train them in acting, in cinematography, in editing, just so that the entire ecosystem of tourism, entertainment, you know, and creative industry, we don't leave them alone. We deliberately fund them. To be, and they are, they are all Nigerian companies that have international, you know, um, um, you know um, the AMA, AMA Award. Every year, year on year, we support all of them, all of them, right? Beyond that, we also set up a fund to support, you know, people in that industry Small, small videos, small, small um, um, videos. We, we, we gave them um, grants, you know, of 10 million, 20 million, 40 million to, to, to do small, small um, um, short videos. All of those things we did. But to agree with you that there's still a lot of investment that is needed there. We need to have so many hotels, you know, um, so many, I mean, investment on our, on our coastline, about 180 kilometers of clear you know, Atlantic Coast, you know, beaches, you know, that, that Lagos is, is known for. Um, the, the private sector are actually also leading in this. There are several beaches that you see in Lagos, you know, during the Christmas. I also, you know, went around some of them. And, and indeed, they're, they're doing. So government can continue to be an enabler, continue to give them, you know, that opportunity to, to, to do well, you know. And, and you also know that in, in the music industry, we are a major supporter of all of them directly, and indirectly, you know, I mean, the last Grammy that some of them even went with, so we went, we, we sent people there to also go and encourage them. So the entire spectrum of that industry, you know, it's a vertical that I am also very interested in. You know, and we usually, it might not be seen, but we usually, usually give all of them grants to, to, for them to, to, to continue to leave it, you know, because we know that it's tough for them. But in terms of additional infrastructure, yes, indeed, we need more hotels, you know, we need more you know, tourist attraction. Baragri, for example, there's a conversation around some um, um, diasporan, you know, some people, 
you know, um, from, from Brazil that want to also come to the, to the Baragri side. We're also cleaning up all of our investment in that place, point of no return. Something happened also in November. You know, a, a whole team, you know, they, they all came down, you know, to go and look at what we have, you know, um, in Baragri. And a lot of exchange, you know, um, um, cultural exchange is it's also being, being done. So, yes, there is opportunity for more. Yes, there is, um, there is, there is a growth potential for more. But it's not that we're not, you know, putting, you know, um, and the right investment or the right set of people. I mean, there, we have a commissioner of tourism that is she's everywhere. She's, she's, she's running everywhere to ensure that, you know, that sector is not left behind. Because we, 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 we appreciate the potentials that are there, you know, especially also for our diaspora and other. You know, by the way, we also just set up another office, a diaspora office. We're the first to also do that after, after the federal government. It's a full agency, you know, just to to show that we are, you know, um, right. we're, we're monitoring them and we appreciate what they're doing. All right, Mr. Governor, I think we have less than 10 minutes. But, so let's see how we can pack all of this uh, I, before we take your final words to Lagosians. Uh, Lagos is doing pretty well in terms of uh, IGR. Everybody knows that. And also, uh, it's the least dependent on FAC, barely 25%. But that's kinds of, it kind of blindsides a lot of people to Lagos, Lagos dead burden which if you do the external and the domestic debt burden, it crosses over the entire budget of 2.2 trillion. So what is your government doing to bring down that number before you leave office in the next few years? And uh, somebody's also asking your preparations ahead of the inauguration for the red line and how far the phase two of the uh, red line, the blue line has the gone line. before okay. we take your final word. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, I mean, I was once a banker, so I never get scared you know, of numbers and um, I never get scared of um, what borrowing is. The question around burden, you know, is what is your sustainability and what lines of investment are you putting, you know, those burdens to, right? If you're using borrowing to advance economic development, what you're doing essentially, right, is that you are making your tomorrow better than today because you can imagine if, for example, we did not take the risk during COVID to have invested in the red line and the blue line, it would be stories. Not only will we not be able to do it today, right, we would have lost out completely and it would have just been a mirage that indeed the government came and they talked about a real infrastructure, but they were not audacious enough to take the, to, to take the risk. We took it. The only risk that we said that we did not want to take was a currency risk. And we said to them at that time, I will not take dollar. I will take a local currency, but I'll work with you to ensure that we deliver it. The good news is that we see real, we see trains, and we're happy that we've done that. So the challenge around is two trillion. It's just a number. Indeed, the capacity of Lagos, we should be doing 20 trillion. The cap Let me tell you, in the last budget, when we pulled all of our numbers together, my people were saying to me that they want a budget of six trillion. Guess what? We can only do two. So that goes to show you the strength and the capacity that the state needs to. We need to be able to double the civil service. We need to be able to provide all of those roads that we're, we're talking about. So we shouldn't even be scared about those numbers. The issue would be, what are we doing with those numbers? Where are we applying them to? For as long as you said, we're not using them to pay salaries. We're not using them to buy diesel. We're, not, we're using them for economic development that will enhance the future of these states. So we will not be, we will not be scared about that. We will always be transparent to show what we have used. Because Money that you don't spend today, right, or investment you don't make today, in five years' time, it becomes four or five times more expensive. And it has been shown. It has been proven all of the time. So take the risk, you know, be very calculative, measure it, make sure that there are risks in which you will not be, be trapped, you know, into default. So that take it in a way in which it's well spread and you do creative financing, you know, that can take you, you know, out of it at the end of the day. So we will not you know, be, be concerned about that. You know, we continue to build a lot more. When people see it, there's also a willingness for them. To, because people, you always ask yourself, which one first? People will say to you, they want service first. We want to see the road before we pay the tax. So you have to ensure that you can creatively build the road so that they get the tax. You know, so that's, that's the balancing that we put with. Regarding the, the, the commencement of a blue line, we've actually started the phase two of the blue line, you know, which is from mile two all the way to Kokomaiko. You know, so that has started. I mean, um, CCCC are on site. They're working. You might not see it. You know, they're demolishing 
a bridge by next week. They're demolishing a bridge by um, trade fair. They're going to build another bridge in that place, for example. No, no. Yeah, by trade fair. They're going to build another bridge. There. That's what, but they are doing all their preparation because the beauty of the phase two is that it's, it's on grid, meaning that um, it's at the level, you know, it's at level crossing. So they will do it quicker and faster. You know, in two years, we should, we should, based on funding, we should be able to complete, you know, the phase two, you know, of the blue line. And regarding the phase two of the red line, we're also trying to raise, you know, um, um, the funding strategy that will push to it because that one is elevated. It's a bridge, you know, a crossover, a co bridge before it goes to, to Marina. So these are all major, major massive investments that we're committed to. And we're looking for how to best fund it and get, get it on board for our people. Well, no, I think at this point, Let's begin to draw the cutting. Mm. We have uh, less than five minutes to go. So uh, what other promises do you want to make to the people of uh, Lagos State uh, who are listening to you about and the both. present and the future? And to Nigerians who are saying, a big power, <laughs> what do you have to say? Thank you. Thank you. Well, f first, really, is to thank all of you and to thank you know, uh, my viewers. Um, it, it, for me, it's been um, a daily review, a daily assessment of, you know, I ask myself at the end of the day, how well have you served <coughs> Lagosians? How sincere have you been to the oath that you swore to? How well have you ensured that, you know, the life of the people that you see on the street, you can indeed bring about policies that will make it better for them? And, and, and my... my, 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 my my, my charge with you is, um, is really for all of us to know that, yes, there are difficult times, there are hard times, but believe me you, at the end of our times, you know, there will also be glor glorious times. But it's not just to fold our arms and believe and expect that the glorious time is just, going to, is just going to drop on us. No, it's really by hard work. It's by a sense of shared commitment you know, and the resilience for all of us to pull through, you know, even during those challenging times. And that's why I want to encourage all of us to say to ourselves that, you know, a call for a, a civil unrest or a strike or something is certainly not a solution. You know, so think through it. So you burn down a bus. That is a government asset that you've lost completely. You go down and destroy a building, you know, be either public or private. That is an asset that is not usable again. But guess what? The very next day, it still doesn't change the course. So that's why I'm going to plead with all of us to let us work together. As your incident commander, I'm giving you the commitment that with the committees and the advisory pool that we're pulling together, it's a bipartisan engagement. We want everybody that have an idea to come and sit with us, tell us straight that this and this is not working. Do it this way. Let us share in the, in, in the ideas that can ensure that we take ourselves collectively out of you know, the challenges that we find ourselves. And to also say that these challenges are not peculiar to us. It's certainly not by the fact that we're from a black nation or something. No, it's a global thing. There's been disruption everywhere. But when we believe that, you know, um, hard times is for hard people to move out, we will get out of this. And I want to say that for us as a government, we're committed. We're committed and we have what it takes, you know, for us to work out of this together. Um, in terms of promises, it's really just to say to you that we will continue to do everything within our means, that the greatest good is for the greatest number. Lagosians are resourceful people. Lagosians are hardworking people. Lagosians are, you know, commercially driven self-starters. That's what I want all of us to build back on. That's what prosperity can do for our city. That's what the Lagos story is all about. Like you keep saying, that Lagos is the very best of all of us. And so let's go Thank out there. Well, huh? Yeah, and let's believe that we can work it and we can work it together. Thank you very much, Thank Governor Babajide Sonwolu, Governor of Lagos State. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Sonwolu Speaks. Thank you for watching. And uh, so I want to say thank you to Governor again, as well as uh, all, the, all our colleagues. Uh, uh, Dr. Ruben Albert, he almost forgot all of us. <laughs> from our <laughs> <Arise> News, <laughs> uh, Shola Kosoko from LTV, as well as uh, Babajide 
I almost said it's Omolo. That's that would be a mistake. But to told you, you are predicting that will be the next one. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> from TV series. Like and, 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 and I'm Jeffrey Uzama from <laughs> Channels Television. So let's just have the photograph. Thank you Thank for you. watching. Thank you. It's been yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Welcome back from the live telecast. We'll now continue with our regular programs. Stay tuned. In the States, they say they even went out of their way to go all the way to the Niger border to invite the headers to come in, that that law they had in Benway before is there. Nothing is going to happen. But Nigeria people of Benway, on very good authority, I want you to know that the